Good morning, everyone. It is a drizzly day here in Paris, British Columbia. It's cloudy, wet, but that's okay. That rain will help get rid of the snow. Today, I thought we'd do something different and uh, give you a brief introduction to modding and how relatively simple it is to do in Campaign Series Vietnam. Actually, for all the Campaign Series games, for that matter. But we'll do that in, in Vietnam. Uh, good morning, Bess. Thank you for joining. Lovely to see you. I hope you're well. Let's load up a scenario, and I'm going to show you something. So we're going to load up a marine scenario. Something to do with Route 9. I just have to find where it is. Dun, 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 dun. There it is, right there, French Battle of Route 9. I am well, thank you. Good morning, Dolce, thank you for joining. So, I'm not going to play this scenario, but I want to show you something. We don't care about that at the moment. So let's take a look at the jump map. And we're going to look at our marine units here. I think they're nice, but I want to change them a little bit. So I'd like to change the canvas on these trucks to help I, for me identify them quickly that they are marine trucks. And one simple way of doing that is just changing the canvas color from the green here, because that'll be standard for all the units in the game, uh, American units. I want to have these marine units as a brown canvas just for me to easily identify which are marine trucks which aren't marine trucks um, as you can see we will open up the F2 so how are we gonna do this we need to know one one thing for sure and that is what unit this is and that unit is this so we're gonna just screenshot that so I know unit ID is 107526. We're going to need to know this number for when we look in the platoon file to identify which graphic that platoon is using. So let's do that now. We know what this is now. We can come back to this and we'll do that after. So the first thing we want to do is go into our install. Mine is a little bit different than standard because this is just I prefer smaller names but that's okay. It'll still work with you. Uh, we're gonna look for this platoon ID in the platoon file. So we know it's an American unit so it's gonna be platoon 10 as you can identify by that right there. Platoon 10 we're looking in the OOB's folder we're going to open that up, and then I'm going to control F and search for that ID. 10, 5, 2, 6, and let's go down. Okay, so we see here are the marine trucks. That is the ID that we found. We'll notice that there's, there's four different versions of that truck, and each of them have different strength point values, which is depending on what they're carrying. That's in the order of battles. That's where these things will be useful. But they are all using the same graphic. You can tell that by this number here. These are the, the graphics that are being associated to these particular platoons. So if you wanted to, you could go in and change so that each of the different strength levels has its own graphics, but we're not going to do that today. We're just going to keep it simple. We're going to keep it simple, straightforward. So that means I need to find the graphics associated to this number. And where do we do that? Well, we do that here. Good morning, John. Thank you for joining. That's fantastic. And good morning, Clink. Good to see you. I hope you're well. Uh, what was I doing? We're going to look in the graphics folders. We're going to look in the units folder. 
and we're going to look in the 3D. So there's a 3D and a 3D XS. 3D XS means the units, they're the same as these, except they don't have shadows. I usually play with the shadows on, so I'm only concerned about these. And again, we're going to look for that, that number. What was it? Uh, 10, oops, 10, 7, 5, 2, 6. Now it's going to search that folder and look for the files that have those that number identified to it. If I remember correctly, there should only be two files that are associated. Yeah, one is the bit file, which is the outline file. And since we're not going to change the unit itself, we don't have to worry about this. This is if you're going to replace the unit altogether and you need a new outline file. We're not doing that, so we're not going to worry about that. Again, this is just a very simple, basic uh, overview on how to do a mod and how simple it is. There we go. There's the there's the unit that we're most interested in. This is the graphic. So open it up, take a look at it, or not. So there we go. We see. This is how it looks like in the game. We can zoom in, we can take a look at it, etc. And we're not going to edit the file in the game. We are going to edit it outside. So that way we leave the standard files alone. We don't worry about them. Now we're gonna go back to our main folder. And look in the mods folder. So you can see I have actually been tinkering to test to make sure that what I was doing is right. So I'm just gonna move those files into there. second. There we go. So we're going to take these that I was tinkering with already and move them into an archive file. So we have our, we grabbed a copy of that, uh, that unit. As you can see, it's there and we're going to modify it. So I'm going to use Corel Photo Paint because that's what I'm familiar with. Let's just open that up in there. There it is. So what am I going to do? I'm going to quickly select the canvas portion of these vehicles and change them to brown. So let's do that. It'll take two seconds. All right, so that's, that's not perfect, but that's okay. Then I'm gonna replace the color. Let's do that. I'm happy with that brown. That's good, we can change that to whatever we want and poof just like that it's brown now if I was this is just a test so I'm just not gonna worry about how terrible that looks uh, let's do the same for these oh, let's do that better because I didn't do that very well Oops, <laughs> I'm having one of those days. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, let's try that again. Oh, one second. Let's try a different vehicle. Sorry, this was working totally fine before. Huh, it's not 
doing what I want. Of course it's not doing what I want. Ah, there. Okay. So, quickly replace the colors. Bada boom. Do the same over here. Replace the colors. Bada boom. And replace the colors. Bada boom. Replace the colors. Bada boom. Now, let's see if we can get this one to cooperate. Close enough. There we go. So, we have our truck. We have it with the brown canvas. We're just going to save that. And then let's make a mod out of it. We no longer need that. So this, if we double click it, should open up. It has our brown canvas on it. And let us make a mod folder. And we're going to call it Marine. Uh, let's uh, 3D Marine Truck. Mod. So one key thing that we need to know is where the mod is going to put the uh, the unit, and we want it to put it. We want to replace the existing file without actually replacing the existing file. How do we do that? Well, we know that we grab the file from the graphics folder, the units folder, the 3D folder. So it's in here. We need to know that is where that is. To do so, we're going to copy that, that graphics folder structure, and we're going to go inside, make another folder, and we're going to call that units, and then inside we're going to call that 3D, 3D. Okay, let's go back to our main folder, let's grab our image, and go into our folder and put it into there. So now when we use the mod enabler, this will replace the graphic with within our proper install, but not actually replace it. It'll just use this instead of the other. And I'll show you how to do that for sure. Um, in here, we're going to add a text file so that when we're in the mod enabler, so now we can use that mod, but Let's make it pretty. Actually, here, let me show you right now how easy it is that we did. So we have this new mod here, right? And we're going to use the mod, enab mod enabler to add it. And that's really all you have to do. You just literally select the mod that you want to use, turn it on by moving it to this activated area. You'll notice that some of these have uh, tooltips, so you can see what they are, right? And that's fantastic. Uh, mine doesn't have that. How do we how do we get that there? Notice mine doesn't have it. Well, it's simple. We just add a text file. Let's call it the same. 3D Marine Truck Mod, and then we say this is a mod that replaces the marine truck graphic so it has a brown canvas you can put whatever you want in here this is just the tool tip so when you're hovering your mouse over you know what the mod is and then we change the extension to whatever yeah the mod name the mod enabler name, sorry. So, JSGME. Let's do that. JSGME. Yes, we want to change it. 
So next time we start the mod enabler, you will see the tooltips. Like so. So this is a mod that replaces the marine truck graphic, so it has a brown canvas, which is awesome. Okay, let's add that. Now that it is activated, let's go back into our game. Notice I didn't have to do anything here. All I had to do was find the number. Didn't have to save it, didn't have to do, do anything. So let's go in to the game and take a look at that particular scenario, or any marine scenario. We'll go back to Route 9 because that's the one we started with. Dolce says mine will be hot pink. You're welcome. It's super simple. Uh, let's hide that. Don't care about the rules. We're just going in to take a peek. Fingers crossed that I did it right and it works. So let's go back to our little base there. Check it out. And there we go. Just like that. We have our units that have the trucks with the brown canvas on it. So yeah, that means you can change any, literally anything you want. If you want the, the uniforms to be different for the guys, if you want the tanks to have something special on it, you know, depending on the strength points or, or whatever, it's super, super simple to mod. I think it's fantastic that we have that capability. And there are some mods already, which is fantastic. Um, Kevin Peltz has made a, a mod that will modify how the airstrikes look, how the artillery strikes look, and uh, how the landing zones look. So let's remove my mod and add his mod, which is this. And you can find his mod at the forum under modding. There's his mod there is fantastic so anyways let's let's look take a look at it so we're gonna close we have it activated let's uh, open up that same scenario because there was there was a landing zone right there again bada boom Maybe I didn't. Hang on a second. Did I do that right? One second. I have the, the wrong one linking. <laughs> Let's just remove it. Let's just add it. Make sure that it's working make sure that I did it right because yeah hang on one second that's see I did it wrong <laughs> so I made this uh, this mod for for uh, or his ute, but I put it in the wrong spot, so I have to make sure that they are in the right location. So I accidentally had the map folder in the in the Vietnam folder, which is not right. It yeah, so that's totally not right. Uh, but it should be in the graphics under map, and that's where his mod should sit. So if we load it up now, it should be fine. Let's just make sure. Mod enabler. Let's remove it. Let's add it. And here we go. Uh, Battle of Route 9's up there. Here. Uh, let's hope it worked this time. Yeah, there we go. 
So you'll see that's how, that's his new 3D version of how the hell the landing zones are. And let's remove the units. And you can see his 2D version. Pretty cool. Pretty neat. I like it. Let's see if we can find one in the field. Yeah, we don't have one in the field here. But let's open up another scenario so we can take a look. Let's uh, open up my starlight, the last of my starlight. And we'll, we know there's landing zones there. We can take a look. So you can see how they're identified here. Quite quite visual, they're very easy to find, which is kind of nice. And you can, if you don't like that, you can make them however you want and use your own mod. Uh, let's uh, take a look at the other, the other mod that is included, uh, which is, which is quite nice actually. So let's exit. Let's go to our mod enabler. Let's remove that mod. These two here, they're def. No, sorry. The blue water mod is default, and the war ho horse uh, North Vietnamese camo mod is default. So they come with the game. Um, let's take a look at this one. So notice it's activated now. These ones are not activated. And uh, let's take a look at the starlight scenario again. The main thing that this does is changes how the 2D water looks to make it easier to identify streams and water courses. For example, in this area here, the, the water is quite prominent. You can see where they are and how it looks. Um, if I open up another instance of the game, don't do this by the way. If I open up another Operation Starlight in a different setting without it, you can see quite clearly what the difference is. Um, so this is activated without the mod. Let's find the same area. So yeah, you can see the visual difference in understanding where the the water features are uh, yeah you see don't do that anyways regardless here they're more the the silver color with the light shallow rivers being brown and here everything is just blue so it, it is much easier to identify here for sure my computer doesn't like that but anyways it gives you an idea what the difference is All those are, are editing various map files within here. So there's a lot of lot of things that are adjusted in order for that to work. But super easy mod to use. A lot of people like it. And, and that's how you access it. Just simply by uh, using the mod enabler. Uh, the 3D camo these are pre uh, more prevalent for uh, NVA type units but here let's take a look let's take a look let's find uh, NVA battle take a look here yeah it is huge Dolce yeah there's a lot of effort went into that mod so that uh, it's possible to I don't know we actually need to see the the, the NVA here so 
So if we go down and track down some NVA, we can see that the units have some uh, some more camouflage on them. They're harder to see, especially the vehicles and whatnot. Uh, can't really see the vehicles. Do we have any vehicles? Probably not. Yeah, just typically there's more there's more camouflage to things, so they're they blend in a little harder with the terrain. These are going to be mostly used for the the late post sixty eight scenarios, especially seventy two and seventy three, seventy four, seventy five, where the the main army units are are inside of South Vietnam. Um, yeah, just to protect them against airstrikes and all that fun stuff. All right. Is there any questions on modding since since we're here, since we're doing it? Again, it's really super simple. The main things to remember are making sure that your your map mod or your your mod in general is identifying exactly where the files that you want to replace are going to replace within the game. So graphics files, units, 3D, you can pick anything in here and change it if you want. Um, I'm not going to go over in this particular video how to completely change the unit. That's That takes quite a bit of time and I'll have to sit down and, and write up a proper tutorial for that. You can find exactly how to do that though in the manual. We have a section called how to mod. I just have to find it. Mode to play. How to mod 16. So this here will break down how to do that. And it even gives you, if you're using Corel Draw, it tells you how to, to make the bitmaps, etc. etc. It's pretty straightforward. Um, it looks like it's a lot, but it's actually not. It only takes a couple of seconds to do, really, in the grand scheme of things. The hardest part is deciding, all right, what do I want my graphics to look like? How do I want to change them? And where do I change them? There's, you can quite literally change 90% of the game to how you want it to look, absolutely. Anything in the graphics folder you can mostly change. Uh, if you want different unit graphics, you can do that. You can do the same for 2D. You can modify how the counters look. You can modify symbols. you want to change the flags you can do that if you want to change the assault value you can or symbols you can do that you can change the icons if you don't if you want to have something different for the assault if you want to have something different for conserving ammo you can change it however you want it's it's fantastic it's great I love it so many options so many options that's great. Okay, so that's an overview of that. Um, I think for the rest of the session, unless anyone has any questions. Let us play Boot Camp 4. So, I haven't played this in a while. Bear with me. <laughs> it is important. Um, I will make a separate Boot Camp 4 video that'll go into more depth, in depth, uh, just like the other Boot Camp re releases that I did. But just to give an idea of how this is different, we'll play this. Uh, John is asking, is it possible to change the unit name um, top center in the unit list as it is displayed in the game. And I believe John is referring to 
this. Can I change the HMG 50 to something else? Uh, yes. Yes, you can. What am I doing? Right. Unit handbook. Okay. So as before, you need to know what that what that number is. So let's open this. Let's make a new one. That's the number we're looking for. We're going to go back to our platoon file. So we're going into the order of battles. We're going into the American platoon file. We will take a look for that particular unit ID. And that is 102849. Voila. So you can see the reference is this. This is what is being shown, displayed in that particular in that area there. Um, you can change that basically to anything you want as long as it kind of fits in there. If it doesn't fit, it'll start over going over the edge there, so it doesn't look that great. But you can change this name to, to whatever. Banana, for example. Um, there is a uh, one thing that you have to be concerned about, though, is that, one, don't edit the main file, which I just did. Don't do that. Uh, you'll you'll make a copy. Don't save. You'll make a copy of that. Put it into your mods folder. So like before, new mod folder. Uh, doesn't matter. O B edit marine or airborne H M G name or something. Whatever you want to call your mod. Regardless, you're gonna make the new folder. You're gonna call that folder. OBs because that's where the file is found in that in this OOB folder. So we'll go back to the mods, go back to our change that to OOBs. It has to be identical, otherwise it might not overlap. So you paste it, open up, and go back and find that unit. And you change the name banana. Now, you have to use the, in order to see that, the file either one needs to be encrypted, which I don't think we include tools. No, we don't. So you have to have, you have to use a version of the EXE that has the no encryption option. Um, which I don't remember off the top of my head, John. I think it is shoot. Is Birdo there? Does he remember off the top of his head? Actually, no. It's in the manual. Ha! Read the manual. Let's find the manual. to mod, order of battles, aha, the no encryption features. So if you want, yeah, thank you, Berto. If you want to use modified platoon files, which we here will do that. So everyone remember, that says HMG 50, and we're going to change it to banana, because we can. So we did modify that. As you'll see. Banana. Actually, let's just change them all. Oh no, it doesn't matter. We we're, we're only focused on that. So let's that's the right one. Let's just use that. So we modified our platoon file. And then we're gonna go and follow the instructions here. Because I've never actually done this. So, learning something new. Yay! 
and we are going to modify the shortcut to say WX for no encryption. Now you can't use this no encryption for um, for play by email or anything like that. It's not going to work. It, it's only for your use only. Keep that in mind. So let's load it up. Oh no, let's not. Let's add the uh, the little mod that I made. Let's make sure that it's working. Yes. Now let's add it using the mod enabler. Mod enabler is so awesome. Close. And then it is activated. We have the shortcut referencing minus X for the, we're not using, we're using the out, just the regular file, not the encrypted file. And let's open it up. Play the scenario, start a new game, go to bootcamp four. And if I did it right, if I did it right, it should be banana. Nope, I didn't do it right. Oh, that's because I selected the wrong unit. <laughs> Try it again. Let's go back to our platoon file. Oops, our mods folder. Go into the platoon file. Find that fancy number and change. Let's just change them all just to confirm. Okay, let's try that again. John says, is that's good to know about the limitations of gameplay. Yeah, because that way you can't have people cheating. Did I do it right this time? No, I didn't do it right. What the heck? Two, eight, four, nine. Airborne. Am I using the right file? Let's double check. Sorry, one second. Properties. Ah, oh, that's why. Because I didn't use the right file. Yes. Oh no, that's not right. Sorry. Don't do that. Let's make a new desktop. Send to the desktop. And then let's do let's do what it says. Minus minus W minus X apply. Let's try it here. Make sure we have the mod right. Yeah, it's there. Make sure it is right. Yeah, OBs, platoon, which is right. Good day, Richard. Glad you could join. Glad you can join me stumbling. Ha <laughs> oh, We don't care right now. We just want to open it up and see if we can get it to work. What the heck? Well, that's beyond me, John. 
I would have to figure out why it's not doing what I want it to do. It should have worked, but it's not. Sorry for wasting your time. The reason I asked is I tried a couple years ago in Rising Sun and ran into a brick wall, so I stopped. I couldn't change the unit name, but thanks for your effort. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure why that isn't working. It should have worked. I'm probably doing... I'm missing a step somewhere, and I don't know what that step is. But I will talk to Berto about that and see how I can, how I can do that. What I did should have worked, in theory. I was here, Berto. Look, I was editing this file here platoon file. Sorry, not in there, in the mods folder. The platoon name. And all I did was change this. Which is this file. So the display name is this in the unit list, but it keeps on showing HMG 50. Because I need to edit the org. No. It shouldn't shouldn't matter. No, editing the org file shouldn't uh, shouldn't matter in theory. Let me uh, let me try something just for for giggles. One second. So I'm doing something off screen to uh, encrypt the file. Let's see if that works. see if it works now. Oops. Out of curiosity. Oops. Ha! I picked the wrong file. Darn it. Hmm. How bizarre. You know what? Maybe... It isn't right. Yeah, no, that's weird. Maybe I'm not doing it right. It should have worked. Why is it not working? Graphics, yeah. That worked. Obese? It was referencing that file. Anyways, yep, don't know. 
press the F2 key. Okay, let's try that. Let's uh, make sure that this I am actually running the mod. Games, Vietnam, Vietnam. Yeah, it is. Let's load it up again. Did did not. Maybe that's what I have to do. Roberto is suggesting that I load and reload the mod. Yeah, because it's not it's not showing. So let's try that. Uh, edit, reload. Let's try the. We have the no encryption version first. We'll try that. Uh, yes, it was a capital. We, I will confirm one second. Now it's showing. Ha! Huh, there we go. Now it is showing. Yeah, so I just had to re... Just remove and re-add the mod. <laughs> Jeez. Wow. That was a, a pain in the bottom. But it is possible, as you can see. And that's the no-encrypted version, because this is the no-encryption EXE. As we can tell by this. Capital X, capital W. So, yeah. It is possible, John. There, we sorted it out. And it was me. That was my fault why it didn't work, because I did not think... Did not remove the mod and re-add it. So, yeah. Silly me. Simple mistake. All fixed now. Totally possible. Now we have 50 caliber bananas ready to shoot some, uh, some Viet Cong. <laughs> That's hilarious. And in my foray, I spilt my coffee. One moment, please. So, yeah, I guess you can. And again, just emphasize the point, if you don't offer this mod to your opponent, they won't see that, obviously. And uh, they can't, you can't use this and play by email, you can't use this uh, online for like LAN play or anything like that, because it, you need to have the encrypted versions of the file to do so. And uh, yeah. So this is just for your benefit only that you're seeing things like this. Uh, if you tried to use your files, it wouldn't work in a play by email or land play. Just FYI. These are for you to play with your own, however you want. But yeah, if you're going to be playing against someone, they won't work, unfortunately. Well, that was an adventure and a half. Okay. Uh, this is Boot Camp 4. But I uh, skipped over the intro, so let's let's do this for uh, a little bit. Um, for those that are joining, or those that are here, uh, Richard did Richard York. He popped in. Um, I think he's still here. If he's not, that's okay. He is doing a live stream on the on the Slytherine TV uh, stream on Twitch, and he'll be continuing playing. Um, ben Trey Rebellion. He started on last week, or, or sorry, this previous few days ago, and he's going to continue it. Uh, he's having a hoot. I would recommend giving him a watch. Uh, I'm just going to go through Bootcamp 4 right now, just for a little bit. Again, I'm not going to do the detailed version, that I'll make a separate video for that. But just to emphasize some of the things that are that are new and different within. Uh, campaign series Vietnam as a reminder uh, even though I've gone yeah just if you're new to watching this here we'll take a 
a quick stab and, and show you what's new. Um, notice that this Bootcamp 4 has the labels because I have access to the 101 update. You can find the map, the proper map, for reasons that are beyond logic. They did not include the uh, labels for the Bootcamp 4, but you can find it here if you are looking for that particular map. Uh, this is an unofficial update on the Matrix forum, but it has the, the map corrections for two maps out of the 108 or whatever it is that somehow they got corrupted. There's a fix here. We should have the the 101 update released in, in a couple weeks, officially, and that'll have all these improvements that, uh, that are listed in here. I, there are more that I haven't updated, but yeah, stay tuned. 101 update coming based we're taking your feedback to heart and, and doing what we can to, to make this fantastic game even better positive vibes everyone positive vibes uh, okay let's take a look what were you supposed to do for this scenario uh, scenario information so one thing to note if you're curious about day and night and when the transitions for visibility are, you can find them under scenario information here. It tells you, so this is going to be a, a completely day scenario, but if there was night, it would say something in brackets N, or the transition between day, night, day, night, or night, day, whatever. It'll tell you in here. Down here, it tells you the visibility based on the turns. So you can see turns 1 through 7, the visibility is going to be 4, or a kilometer. 8 through 12, 5, etc, etc. So it looks like it'll be kind of like an overcast day. Not the best for visibility, but not terrible. Uh, it says here, Welcome to Bootcamp 4. In this bootcamp, you will utilize everything you have learned in the previous three bootcamps and learn how event points can turn the tide of a scenario, as well as learn about on-map aircraft and riverine units. So, that's important. What does that mean? If you are familiar with the campaign series the previous titles have been wholly focused on the objectives objective locations and acquiring victory through two things one securing the objectives and two destroying your enemy and not losing very many of your own units at the same time this has fundamentally changed in the campaign series Vietnam game. Yes, in 95% of the scenarios, there are 98 or 99 or whatever, uh, there are objectives. But that is not the end-all to be-all of gaining victory within that scenario. A prime example of that is this scenario. There are no objectives. Oh no, what do I do then? You have to follow the briefings. You have to understand what the briefings are telling you. You have to see what your mission is and how best to execute that mission. It will depend on you. You know what? One second. Just because Berta was watching, and I'm nice, I'm going to turn on the blue water mod. And then we'll go back to this. One second. And we don't need that mod anymore. So there we go. Let's get rid of our banana HMGs. We'll add that mod. And let's go into the game. Oh, will start a new one. We didn't do anything yet. So let's just start fresh. Go into boot camp 4. And hopefully the blue water mod enabled if I did it right. Yes, there we go. So you can see, it's, they're quite clear to, to see where the water is. That's fantastic. There we go. Um, back to what I was saying. 
there are no objectives on this particular scenario. It is all task-based. It's all mission-based. You are going to be getting your major victory by following the orders that are given to you. In this case, we have a scenario briefing. Let's take a look at it. Uh, this assumes that you've read through the manual, played through boot camp 1, 2, and 3. I highly recommend you playing the boot camps. It'll teach you how to play. If you're gaining a minor victory or a major victory in your boot camps, then I think you're ready to play the other scenarios. If you haven't, keep trying until you do. Yeah, I know, Berto, you have another show to watch. Yeah. I hope Richard does well. And we'll be catching up with Richard here shortly. Uh, yeah. So, we are still at Dacto in the Central Highlands. In the previous scenario, you had secured Dacto 2, built a firebase, and defended it against the Viet Cong attack. You will be cleared. You have also cleared the mountains of the Viet Cong operating in the area. Great job. Our forces are the 1st 503rd Airborne, supported by civil affairs units, and artillery at the firebase. Uh, enemy forces, isolated pockets of resistance are expected, but that should be light. So that's good. We should be expecting some Viet Cong, but maybe they're not going to be so terrible. Your mission in this scenario is to clear some Viet Cong inf influenced villages. Dak Rai Peng, pardon me for the butchering of the Vietnamese names. Dak Rai Loop or Lop, in south side of the on the south side of the river. Organize the local civilians there and then transport them back by truck to Kong Hua or how I don't know how you say that for resettlement. Uh, this is a multi-phase operation. Phase one, a company escorting a few civil affairs units will move down to this first village uh, to secure and clear the village before moving on to the second village. Uh, after securing both the villages, organizing the civilians, you will use the water transport to ferry the villagers to Rendezvous Alpha. Phase three, a company will provide rendezvous or will protect Rendezvous Alpha while the civilians are transported and escorted back to Con Hua, where Rendezvous beta is actually this will take two trips as there's not enough action or not enough trucks available at the moment phase four a company will return to dacto 2 and take over guard duty at the firebase you lose event points for indirect firing and ordering airstrikes on inhabited villages whether or not occupied by the enemy you will lose event points for any civilian losses the supply levels are high at the beginning of the scenario but expect them to taper off no additional supplies, weather is expected to remain consistent, and let's get started. Again, follow the instructions. First thing I want to do is turn on the map labels, and that's why it's so terrible that they got corrupted, because it's important. You need the map labels for this particular mission. Grab the, the boot camp 4 map at that link, at the location where I told you here. Uh, you'll need the labels, they are important. Uh, this will help you find the two key villages in phase one requires you to move to. Your force has been landed on the southern bank of the Dak Pako. You will want to advance to the first villages, Dak Rai Lop, with your infantry platoons securing the civil affairs from attack. So let's take a look. We have a river, we have some water transport units, and we have Rendezvous Alpha, which is important. This is our first village that we need to go to. This is our second village that we need to go to. Again, I've played this before, I, I know very well. And we need to send all of our civilians that we acquire back here to this main town. So, this will take some, some doing. We have some new units in here. They're called Civil Affairs Units. Oh. Mental note, again, this is uh, update 101. We have changed the unit list numbers here. They are bigger, and they are using a clearer font. Hopefully that will, as an interim solution, help you see what these numbers are. Uh, back to the civil affairs units. They, they are not good for combat at all. They can defend themselves for sure, but they're not intended to be used as a combat unit. Therefore, in this scenario, I have a, an infantry company. I will be protecting them with, with all that I can. Um, if I run into 
to via cog these are are going to be held in the back making sure that they are safe in order for me to complete the mission that i have assigned to me and that mission is go to these villages and collect the the pro government civilians to take them back to where they need to go so let's start the let's start going we'll select our our commander infantry platoon and start meandering towards the village excellent uh great job you started the mission hopefully the first thing you notice is that there are no objective locations on the map that's right this is by design as this scenario is intended to show you how to acquire strictly by or action points sorry acquire points strictly by successfully successfully completing tasks this provides a completely different approach to looking at and playing a scenario from the traditional way the campaign series has been played, with the earlier heavy focus on capturing objectives. In the campaign series Vietnam, completing missions is more important than capturing objectives in many cases, which is true. Or you need to do both. You need to capture objectives as well as completing the missions. In many scenarios, you'll be awarded for collecting a series of objectives, and holding them for a certain amount of turns or destroying units or finding caches or things like that it, it's not it's not just about the objectives and that's one thing that's that i know is difficult to to get past especially if you're an old campaign series player you're used to just going at the objectives and holding the objectives great start there's more to it now there's more depth there's more thought uh where are we this will provide a new level of fog of war in certain scenarios which is true as you will not know your opponent's objectives for the scenario will be in many cases they may be completely different than yours absolutely um the way that the opponent may gain victory is not going to be the same as you because maybe their objectives are completely different everyone has objectives on the map your key objectives may be completely different than the opponent's key objectives. Why would you know, right? Hint, uh, you can review the scenario briefing at any time by selecting the scenario briefing under the status menu, which is, yes. So status, scenario briefing, and you can review this at any time. Uh, let's move our other company up. And let's move our civil affairs units. Uh, your civil affair units is working its way towards the jungle, or working its way through the jungle towards Dakrai Lop, which is here. The civil affairs unit is not a combat unit, so it is best to let your combat platoons take the lead and deal with any Viet Cong that are found in the area before sending in the civil, civil affairs units. The unit does not have any special abilities, but it will be essential to be victorious in this scenario. Keep such units well protected, to accomplish their tasks. Hint, organize your company so that the civil affairs units are protected and do not engage in combat. I know for these boot camp scenarios, there's a lot of reading involved, but it's important that you read what these things are telling you because that is how you're gonna gain your major victory. Uh, you need to read them, you need to follow the instructions. If you decide to go do your own thing, you're, you're not gonna gain a victory, period. There we go. Sweet, simple, straightforward. These things are fixed. We have some, uh, our banana machine guns. Ha ha ha. I changed the name back. Um, and we have our battery, which is great. We can see, should be a fairly simple trek to go do this. Shouldn't take too long. There's some trails, there's some places to cross. Uh, we can't cross this major river, so we'll actually have to use these boats. That being said, we presume that they will be released. Let's see when. We don't know when because this is only a 37 turn scenario, which I'm not going to play the whole thing today. We will continue it next weekend. Um, you can identify here that these are going to be released based on something that we've accomplished. Um, we need to complete a task then this because they're completely out of the range of the scenario they will be made available to us again follow the instructions explicitly and you will have things be released to you when you should 
All right, let's just save that bootcamp four and end the turn. Nothing happened, so let's continue our stroll. Let's go towards the village. I don't have enough action points to go in there. That's fine. Let's bring our civil affairs units. So we're going to keep them back because we don't know what's in there yet. We have our units flanking from this position. We're yeah, we are there. We could shoot, but we don't know what's in there. So let's not do that. So let's save. Continue. And that's a good thing we didn't. Uh, except we did take some losses. Of course we took some losses, because that's just... I have a really bad habit of killing my Americans. No effect. That's good. So we know there's something in there. Let's uh, Let's take a shot at it. It is hidden. And I can't assault because that guy is disrupted. So we will just continue shooting. And press enter. Still can't see him, I don't think. No. But let's try and assault it. At least we can see him now. That's good. So there's a leader and there's a a Viet Cong rifle platoon in there. We're doing our best to to eliminate it. They are dug in there though, unfortunately. We have our civil affairs units, they're still waiting. Take a look. Yeah, okay, let's go. So far, so good. We are burning turns, though, trying to kill that unit. Nothing new to report. Let's, uh, let's see if we can assault this thing again, maybe from uh, two different angles. Ah, we did. We were successful. Looks like you're clearing Dakrai Dak Lop. Great effort. Make sure the area around Dakrai Lop is clear of Viet Cong, and then bring in the civil affairs units. You'll want the civil affairs units to be in each of the village hexes. So both of the hexes that are that contain the village by the end of the turn. Hopefully your transports are close by and ready to move. Okay, so we have successfully captured that village. It looks like it's clear, so let's bring our, our civil affairs units in there. Okay. So we need to, it says, we need to make sure that they're in both of these hexes. Uh, don't have enough action points to do both, so let's turn on the map hexes. There we go. Let's turn off the labels. These are the two hexes. We can identify that again by looking at the message log, and it's saying these two hexes. 29, 29, 30, 28. 29, 29, 30, 28. Perfect. Let's double time, see if we can go all the way over there. Uh, no, not enough action points. We have our platoons. Let's get ready. Continue our strolling. We're going to start meandering towards this village here, Dakrai Peng, because that's our next target. And we will get our civil affairs units where they need to go next turn. So far, so good. Nothing new to report, of course. Same old, same old. So we have our civil affairs units and the hexes where they need to go. We're going to send our other companies, our other units, towards the objective, which is over here. 
I'll leave this infantry protecting these uh, civil affair units just for now. Outstanding. The civilians are organized from Dakrai Lop and should be available next turn. For following orders, you have gained 100 event points. So again, instead of objectives, we're completing, we're completing tasks, we're completing missions, and that's how we get our points. So let's see how that looks in the grand scheme of things. This is new. Objective points. Side A objective points. Side B objective points. Now, this uh, is not going to matter in the scenario because we don't have any objective points on the map. But we did gain 100 action point or event points for completing one mission. So we've gained some points. Unfortunately, we did take some losses, but we are doing better than the VC at in this point because we are up by two. So let's continue and try to minimize our losses. Uh, since we have the civilians coming, we can start the trek. I'm going to leave one these two units with the civilians, just in case. Let's take a look at the map. How are we going to get to that position? Um, let's send one platoon this way, and we'll send another platoon this way. I don't know what's going to happen. Okay, so far so good. Let's move our infantry platoon up. Okay, there we go. So we're going to attack from this way and this way just to make sure that everything is covered. There are two hexes there, I presume, that need to be looked at into. So let's uh, end the turn. So far, so good. At this point in the scenario, you should have cleared Dak, which we did. And the first groups of civilians should have been organized for transfer. Not yet, but they will. Uh, continue on to Dakrai Peng, which is up here, as we decided, up here. Make sure the civilians you have in tow are safe and secure from any attacks. They can start towards the river crossing at Rendezvous Alpha, which is there. Might be wise to ha leave one of your combat troops in the rear of the column to protect any attacks from the rear. Reinforcements have arrived. Okay, let's add our reinforcements. Uh, some of the civilians have arrived and are ready to be escorted. You will need to continue on to the next village, so make sure the civilians are protected against attack from the Viet Cong during this phase of the operation. It would be wise to keep the civilians in the middle of your column to protect against ambush. Yes. Okay, so we have our civilians. We are going to start them on their journey towards Rendezvous Alpha. Uh, that will be a a longer task to do just because it's a long way to get there but that'll give us time to go secure this village yeah we're we're on the right track on the right track all is good oh what did we find there sounds like an rpg so let's do a couple of shots oh we didn't uh succeed in that, that's okay. Uh, I can't move the civilians yet. I can move the civil affairs units. So we need to get these civil affairs units to that village. That's fine. No problem. Don't take any losses, because that would suck. We already lost one. The civilians are organized and ready to be transferred to Con Hua. Uh, you have completed the first part of your phase one. That's great. You will now move the civilians to the river so they can cross using the ATCs to land at Rendezvous Alpha. Okay. start their their trek let's see if we can double time them they will move slower yeah they're only moving two hexes and that's okay so that'll be a, a task and a half to get them where they need to go uh, let's move our oh shoot 
Ah, we found a frickin' sniper. Those gosh darn golly gee, that aggravates me. Ah, <sighs> snipers. Oh, and we've run into resistance at Dakrai Peng. Looks like there's another machine gun. Yeah, another machine gun. Let's do some... We're in a decent position here. We're, uh... We're on a ridge overlooking the village. Gives us a little bit of extra protection. Plus, we're in a forest. So we have two things that we need to deal with. We need to deal with this RPG and this village. Plus a sniper. Ah, oh, frustrating. That's okay. Let's do this. Uh, we might not be able to cross that. Nah, we can't. So, I can't cross this, unfortunately. So I have to go right up against that RPG unit. And, uh, see if I can either one assault it or two shoot it. Fortunately, it used its its opportunity fire during its phase. Oh, they're not dying. But that's okay. Next turn we'll assault it. That'll clear that RPG unit there and we can bring in this platoon over, over here. Uh, we have to deal with this sniper or we can just ignore it and just continue along this flank because so far things are better over here than up here. We do need to get the civil affairs units there though. So, do I go all the way around? Yeah, I think I will go all the way around. Stay out of the way of the snipers. Make my life a little bit easier. Let's do that. No sense wasting more troops on snipers. Alright. There we go. Keep drawing his fire again. We're in a higher position. In forest. We have decent cover. We should be okay. That might not be okay. He has the height advantage, but the terrain is helping us. Phase one is now completed. You'll notice the water vessels are ready for your for your next turn, so you can send them upriver and help with the crossing plot operation. Oh, okay. They're not released yet, so next turn. That's good. Uh, let's just assault this. Straight off. There we go. Now we, we've been clearing this. We can attack this village, Dakrai Peng, from two different directions. That will hopefully give us a benefit. Let's continue moving our civil affairs units in this clear area. And we'll take the civilians and do the same. Let's double time. Let's see if we can get further. Double time these civilians. And these ones cannot be because they're fatigued. And let's get... What can we do with this platoon? Do we go into Sniper Alley? Or do we go up here? Uh, what do you think? Sniper Alley or go around? I'll leave that guy that up to you. You make the decision. Pretty please. Anyone? John? Going once? Going twice? Alright, let's go. So far, so good. Uh, the ATCs and monitor have been released. You will move these upriver to Rendezvous Alpha to allow civilians to cross the river. ATCs, armored troop carriers aka tango boats are armed with our armed LCM landing craft where the backbone were the backbone of the riverine operations in Vietnam uh, now typically obviously you wouldn't find these in the DAG2 area this is just a, a boot camp scenario and that's why they're here um, these would be typically outfitted with M60 machine guns M2 heavy machine guns and grenade launchers Monitors were the artillery version of landing craft and used for heavy weapon support. They varied in armament, which included mortars, 40mm and 20mm autocannons, grenade launchers, and machine guns. You might want to lead with your monitor up the river in case the Viet Cong are lurking on the riverbanks. 
Okay, so let's let's start going up with our monitor. That's exciting. And oh look at that. It has a very powerful range. It attacks at one at twenty, one hex away, and has a range all the way up to, to five hexes. That's fantastic. And let's move our Oh wait. Ah, I didn't. I didn't even load. Use our monitor first. I was bad. That's okay. Next turn we'll swap and get the monitor in the lead, just in case we run into any VC ambushes. We have our civil affairs units going to where they need to go. Go around and protect the rear, says uh, says Bud. Yeah, I think that's definitely a wise idea. Get these civilians ahead. And... Uh, bring up that platoon in the rear. Good suggestion, bud. There we go. Uh, now let's draw some fire with our our platoon up in the in a good position up here. So if you wanted to see quickly what the elevation is, you can do so by pressing the period button on the keyboard and you can see that these are level 22. This is level 23, so we're one hex level higher. Uh, in this case, they are 20 meter differences, and you can identify that by the elevation. Where I am, 23 is 640. Where they are, it's elevation 620. So there's a 20 meter interval difference between the uh, the steps. Uh, let's draw. Let's shoot again. Uh, machine gun. hopefully save ourselves. We do have another shot because it's an A-class unit. We get three shots. Oh, and look at that. We destroyed one of the platoons. Perfect. Let's bring in our leader and other platoon to get closer. Uh, can I see from there? We can, we can decide that by visibility. Yes, we can see him. Should I shoot from here? See if I get lucky? Or get in closer and take the risk of taking more losses? What do you think? More losses or or sit back? It's tempting. I have a leader, so that helps. It does increase the attack value. But I am lower, so that reduces my attack value at the same time. Maybe it balances it out. What do you think? 500 meter shot? Should be okay. Closer? Ah, okay. Bud says closer. Let's go closer. Oh, no. Oh. So, it, uh, they had a strike at my leader at the same time, but they missed. So, we were attacking at 12 when we were two hexes away. Now we're attacking at 15. Let's see if we can take that machine gun out. Maybe, maybe not. But we didn't take any effect, so that's good. We, yeah, he fired twice. Next turn, we should be able to get in there and assault it, which will allow us to bring our civil affairs unit up. That's that's awesome. That's really good. All right, let's turn off the elevations. Uh, one other useful thing is map hints. And what do map hints do? They will tell you your hex sides. So I pressed the backslash button on the keyboard and it offers the information here that you're seeing displayed and that is what are the hex side factors. These are rivers, these are fords, the PT is a path, these are minor rivers, these are shallow rivers, uh, what else? UP means unpaved road. Do I have anything else interesting around here? Let's see. Let's go over to the city. Ah, here you'll see SN. That means there's a stone wall there. Uh, you can't drive through stone walls with wheeled vehicles, but typically there will be a path somewhere to, to get in and out. 
let's see, is there anything else? MB means there's a medium bridge there. Anyways, super handy, especially in the terrain that uh, that we're fighting in. It might be useful, and if you're not using the blue water mod, you might not be able to identify quickly if it's a stream or, or what. Uh, yeah, so there you go. Options. Options are good. Let's turn that off. Okay, let's end the turn. Being attacked, no effect. No effect. So, actually, there was a question on the forum uh, during the next e question on the forum where the display, the the shooting display, was identifying from lo from one location to another location. So you can identify where you know the firing hex is from and where it was going. The main primary reason for that is because in 2D you have a harder time identifying where the fire is coming from whereas 3D you get the gun classes as well as the, the tracer rounds showing where the firing is going to and coming from. So as a, as a balance for that we decided to offer that in the dialogue to, to let the 2D player know where the fire is coming from and going to. Just for balance that's all. Does it give you an unfair advantage? No, not really, because if you're looking at it in 3D, you're seeing that anyways. Uh, okay, let's get a little bit closer. Let's use both of these units and assault. Now, you'll notice how I'm assaulting here. I'm assaulting from these directions. And since all these units are performing in the same assault, this is what we call a flanking assault. This flanking assault offers a bonus over a regular assault. So let's resolve it and see if we get lucky. So, we did kind of get lucky in the sense that we probably eliminated one of the units, but a leader decided to meander off into the bush. So we'll have to go track him down. Let's grab one of our civil affairs units and put them up into the village. And let's grab the other civil affairs units and get them over as well. Let's take our civilians, get them closer to where they need to go. Again, they're slow, unfortunately, quite slow compared to our, our regular troops. You'll see the difference there. They expended most of their action points just moving two hexes, whereas my infantry unit probably still has another hex to go. But for safety, let's just keep our platoon there. We will uh, grab our ATCs, get them closer to the rendezvous point. You can tell the ATCs as well as the monitor. The monitors have uh, some uh, weapons heavier weapons than the ATCs do. Let's take a look at the range on those things out of curiosity. Oh yeah, way different comparatively to the uh, the ATC. So this monitor at one hex away will fire at a, a 28 value. That'll pretty much decimate anything. Um, any infantry type anyways. And it'll shoot all the way out to, to 10 hexes. That's brilliant. Again, not designed for firing at armored vehicles because that's not what it's for but against infantry along riverbanks or near shore or something like that you have very good fire support all right there we go i think we're doing okay so far again following the instructions we have to get the uh civil guard units to both of these villages civil civil affairs units sorry not civil guard <laughs> and there we go. Let's end the turn. And let's bring our ATCs closer. Let's there's our leader there that we saw. Let's uh let's overkill and assault it and hopefully capture it. Yeah, there we go. 
That's perfect. And then we'll try and get our, our civil affairs units into where they need to be. All right. I think, uh, yeah, we're just waiting now for our other civilians to come and getting ready to cross over to Rendezvous Alpha. We have the civil affairs units where they're supposed to be, I believe. And let's, uh, let's end the turn. Uh, the civilians are getting organized at Dakarai Peng, which is the new village we just uh, are securing, and should be available next turn. For following the order successfully, we've gained another 100 points. Awesome. Let's get our boats closer. Let's select it before we do that. These civilians are, are ready to cross. We have our infantry platoon ready to cross. Let's bring our other units closer. So notice I, I can't cross right now into, into Rendezvous Alpha. I have to wait for the boats. Reinforcements have arrived. Let's add those. Two more groups of civilians. Perfect. They'll be ready to move next turn, and we'll have everyone organized around this area, so we are ready to start hauling, hauling civilians across. And I will show you next turn how great something new to the campaign series is that we've added. Um, a new feature to make life a lot easier. Okay, let's end the turn. So, these have full action points, and they are ready to start transferring some civilians across. And now, before you would have to load and unload, now all you have to do is if you have a unit, a waterborne unit, in one of these hexes, you can just literally cross the river. It'll burn action points to do it, as you saw. But it'll start the process for them to cross the river. So let's do the same here. And the same here. Now I can't I can't move anything else. So let's move the civilians and everyone else getting down to where they need to go. I was instructed to put the civilians in rendezvous alpha. So that's what I will do. I will ensure that all all of them go into Rendezvous Alpha. Eventually I'll take my uh, my other units and get them start trucking, start heading towards the final location, which will be up here. Remember, we were tasked to have our A company go back to the firebase, if you recall correctly, in the scenario briefing. That is phase four. Once all the uh, civilians are on their way back to the to the relocation point. A company will return to Dacto 2 and take over guard duty of the firebase. So, once they've completed the mission here, their final mission is to go to the firebase. And so far we're we're doing well. Let's end the turn. We'll get the civilians into the location. So remember, all the civilians have to go in there. Good job on getting civilians across the river to Rendezvous Alpha. Once you have all the civilians across the river, secure Rendezvous Alpha. When the civilians are in place, the transport at the relocation settlement area should be made available. Hint, use the infantry to secure the area and the roads towards the firebase, but leave the civilians at Rendezvous Alpha until your transports are available. So yeah, again, we're taking the the civilians and we will put them all there. Let's grab our, our rifle platoon and start securing the area to make sure that they are happy. And I can't cross.
across there yet. There we go. Okay. So as you can see, it does take some time to, to get everything across. A little over halfway through the scenario at this point, you should have the civilians across the river or have started the crossing on the north side ready to be transported. Once they are all across, you should see that the trucks will be released to your to transport them back to uh, Con and, I don't know how you say that. Hoya? Hoyo? I don't know. Okay. So yeah, halfway through the scenario, we're pretty much where we need to be, almost. And the last civilian getting across there should should resolve that. Um, can I get this guy across by double tying him up on the hill? Maybe? Yeah, we can. Totally. That's good. So far, this is clear. That's fine. We'll start moving our infantry company down the road. Start clearing it. Because we do have to bring the trucks up and around. Uh, next turn we should be able to move the rest of these troops across the river. I'm getting ready for our trucks which are all the way over here. Looks like that'll take a few turns to, to go back and forth. So once they're released we might, uh, as we're clearing this road, we might bring the civilians down just to be a little bit closer to help the, the time. So let's uh, let's keep going. Nothing new to report. Let's start trucking. Trucking down the road with our infantry. So again, we're still protecting our civil affairs units. They're not combat units. And we don't want to lose any points for uh, mismanaging them. There. The uh, civil civilians are all in the place where they need to be. Which is good. Our A company is also where it needs to be. We have our boats, they've completed their task, so we can start pushing them back to where they need to go. So far, so good. So far, so good. Let's end the turn. Well done. For getting all the civilians across the river, you've earned an additional 200 event points. You need now need to get the civilians to Con Hoa. I should change that name to something more easy to say. But no, didn't do it. Oh, it looks like there's something there, but we don't know what it is. Uh, let's take our civil affairs units. Let's, let's shoot in there don't know what it is. It's across a river. We can't cross it. Let's get a little closer. Keep shooting. So we're going to have to risk. Uh, we're not going to risk anything yet. Let's bring up more infantry and our leader. You know what I'm going to do? Aha! Here's a sneaky little thing. So again, our, our civilians are in that X because that's where they were told to be. We're clearing the road and getting ready for our trucks. But what I'm going to do is take our, our units, our civil affairs unit, and see if I can load them on the boats and get them that way. So we have our infantry company clearing the road. We did notice that there's something there. We don't have any helicopters or anything like that. So uh, we got shot at and retreated. It is a sniper. Uh, phase two is now complete. Your transport vehicles have been made available to proceed with phase three of the operation. For following orders, we've successfully gained another 100 points. Let's see what we're sitting at now. So yeah, we're, we're getting there. We're up to a minor defeat now. Obviously the victory will come when we uh, have
have been successful and secured the civilians back to where they need to go. Let's grab our trucks next turn. They should be released. And let's, let's load these things first. So we're going to move our civilian or civil affairs units down and load. And then this guy will come in and we'll load him. Notice I'm using the no because they're in the same hex. So now all these units, all my civil affairs units are, are in the protected in the protection of these uh, water vessels. So it'll just be my marine units that need to deal with that sniper or airborne unit, sorry. I don't know if I'll be able to attack them. I can't see, I know they're there, but I can't get a good, uh, good eye on them for whatever reason. They are hidden, the buggers. All right, we'll just leave our, our units there. Um, we could start moving the civilians, but just to make sure that they're there until my trucks get released. Oh so, yeah, we're still fighting that sniper. We can see that it's there. We just don't have any shots left to fire at it. Ah, there we go. The transports have been released. They consist of a couple of tunes of trucks and a couple armed jeeps that are available for escorting your trucks. You can see you only have enough trucks to transport two groups of civilians at a time. You will make need to make the trip twice. There will be this time will be the essence in completing the mission. It is best to keep your vehicle spaced out in a convoy for best protection. Yeah, okay. So let's grab our trucks and let's see where they can go. Oh, down the road would be better. Now we have jeeps. Yeah, so this is an uphill. The trucks are a bit slower than the jeeps. We will try and keep them all together though. That being said, we can now start high-tailing our civilians closer to the trucks to make life a little bit easier for them. We're just going to double time and move as far as we can. Uh, we will be using... Oh, I can't double time up there either. Oh, that's too bad. Let's get our civil, civil affairs units where they need to go. And let's keep that sniper active. I can't assault it because it's across a river. All I can do is, is shoot at it. Am I going to destroy it? Probably not because it's probably in a bunker. It's probably in an entrenched position. So I'm pretty much too barred. Oh, ha! Huh, never mind. We got lucky. We killed it. Perfect. Excellent. So now A Company can start its... Uh, its journey back to the its position that it needs to go which is at the fire base it was told it has to go there that's where it'll go we'll start hauling the civilians we've cleared the road we're doing we're doing okay we're doing okay our trucks are there they should be one two turns away ish let's see what happens uh, you may wish to start advancing the civilians down the road. Yeah, okay. Make sure you protect them against any Viet Congs lurking in the woods. Which we've been dealing with as we've been clearing the road. And we're going to move our, our boats down. These civilians keep on trucking. We'll get our trucks on the road. split up the trucks just in case they're ambushed. That way we still have one. Split up everything a little bit. Safety first. Do I have any other vehicles at the moment? I do not. 
so I have to make do with what I have. Yep, I don't have anything else. I have to use what I have. Let's uh, move our, our infantry down towards the fire base. They should get there in a couple turns if I start double timing them. Yeah, I think we're we're in a good position right now. We're doing okay. End the turn. Nothing new to report. I like that. That's good. Let's uh, double time these. Get them on the airfield so they're they're out of the way of the trucks, so we don't have to worry about that. And they're they're literally right there. We're almost to where they need to be. And that's perfect. Let's move our vehicles. Get a little closer. And move our civilians. We can double time one of them. Let's do that. Get them as close as possible, just to make our life easier. I double time any of these? Yep, yeah, I can double time one of them. I have the other one, no. We'll leave the machine gun jeeps there. This truck has most of the action points. That's great. We'll move this truck up here. So next turn, we'll be able to load up two of these civilians and uh, get them ready to, to haul back towards Rendezvous Beta. We'll unload, unload these guys. Let's just do it up. Oh, they don't have enough action points. Never mind. Uh, so far, so good. Let's take our jeeps. Let's go back. Make sure that everything is hunky-dory. Get our positions here. Just... So I have good visibility. What can I see here? I can see all that. That's good. Our platoons are, are ready to be at the fire base. So far, we're, we're feeling good about this. And you know what they say. If you're feeling good, something's going to happen. Yeah, there's something there. Spotted some movement, but couldn't identify what it is. And something there. That's not good. Okay. You know what? Let's continue clearing the road. <laughs> Bottom of the sixth has arrived. All right. Thank you for joining. Uh, so earlier you just missed me going and fumbling through modding. <laughs> and now we're in the middle of boot camp four. We're almost, uh, we're almost at the end of it. Well, or the beginning of it, depending on how you look at it. Instead of taking, we still have a lot of turns left, so we're going to take a company, go along the road a little bit, make sure that it's clear. Since we did spot something, we don't know what that something is yet. Uh, I don't want to shoot at it because it could just be civilians. So let's let's just hang tough and wait. In the meantime, we're going to grab our civilians, load them up, get them on the road. Grab these civilians as well. Might as well take the ones that are fatigued, because that way we can double time the other ones. Let's double time them, get them closer. Yeah, I know I'm making the civilians run. I'm not a very nice man. That's okay. Okay, so yeah, we'll use our A company to start clearing this road, make sure that it's okay, and then as we get closer to the end, we'll uh, we'll send them back to the fire base to make sure that we get our points for doing that. So let's unload the uh, civil affairs units. We're unloading, and notice I want to put them, I want to load unload them on the upper edge of the bank. So let's do that. And the same here, let's unload them upright. There we go. So now everyone's unloaded. 
boats are okay to use. There we go. I wish we had more trucks, but we don't. Who designed this mess? Oh, something's up there. Oh no, the Viet Cong are around. Oh no. And they're going up to the airfield, which is blocking our road, which means we deal, need to deal with the Viet Cong before we can use that road. Fubar. Looks like the Viet Cong are attacking. C Company is getting organized and will release for combat soon. Okay. That's good. Uh, bottom of the six is asking, I see a hex with 512. It doesn't have a hill in front of it, so what does it stand for? Hex 512. You see 512. Where do you see 512? Whereabouts? Oh, here. That's the root number. So that's uh, root number 512. This road is root 512. Uh, typically, um, from a cartographic point of view, I will typically label uh, terrain features in in green, and I will label uh, you know disturbance areas like villages and towns and things like that in black, and military areas in in red, just for a quick a quick visual difference. If it's black, it's disturbance. If it's green, it's a, a natural feature. If it's blue, it's a water feature. If it's red, it's something military based. So in this case, Rendezvous Beta, it's important to our mission, therefore it's labeled in red. Uh, the military airfield, the rifle range, the fire base, they're all, they're all red. And black is just human disturbance, whether that be villages or roads or whatever standard mapping labels. That's just my preference. You can, If you're making your own maps, you can do it how you want. Uh, yeah, we have a problem. We have uh, Viet Cong in the area. We saw them here. We did notice some units down here. So we need to uh, come up with a plan of getting our trucks there where we need to be and avoiding that. How are we going to do that? Well, we have trucks. They're, uh, they're probably going to be okay for going off-road. This terrain doesn't look terrible, but we can only cross here or here because there's a bridge and there's a ford. This doesn't matter because it's a shallower stream, so we can just cross that. So our plan is going to be to send up this infantry company, secure this crossing, and start humping our trucks through the woods here, or through the uh, the open terrain, and see if we can avoid this conflict area. Bring up C Company to deal with that, but avoid this road for now, because our mission is to get these civilians back there, and we're using whatever we can to, to get them there. And with that, we have to go off-road. Because we have to make two trips with our trucks, and we don't have a lot of time to do it. Uh, there is no air recon, unfortunately, in this scenario, because the scenario designer is evil. We do have artillery, though, so we can use this battery. So let's do that. Let's see what we have. We have a mortar. Locate which is in the town. That's great. Let's start plotting some artillery and mortars. And let's get uh, let's get our A company up to where it needs to go. Uh, well, it's a good idea to help clear the road. Don't forget phase four of your mission. Yeah, so this is a reminder. If you want to get your points, you better put the A company back into the firebase. We are trying and we are going to do that but right now we're trying to do our best to successfully <laughs> to complete the other part of the mission which is phase three to get our civilians where they need to go um, and doing so we'll be saving a company and going to the firebase for the last you know three or four turns 
because right now we need a company as a combat unit. As you saw, we did run into more VC down here, which means that this area is not secure. So we need to secure that. I should have saved the artillery to, to start plotting that. Um, I don't have any other units that I can use at the moment. And I don't want to risk bringing my trucks into that area quite yet. So here they're protected. But we will want to get them across this as soon as we can. Uh, let's get them a little bit closer. I don't think we're going to be under attack. We should be fine. We have some machine guns for protection. Next turn, we're going to draw fire, go and attack those, whatever that was. I think it was an RPG that fired from there. Not sure. That's my logical guess, though. I'm not sure what is all in here, but at least we know there's an RPG in there. We'll use our A company to go attack that, draw fire, in order to get our civilians down the road, down, down through this area, to get them the long way around. It will take extra turns to do that, but I think that's the log logical way of doing it. <laughs> Bottom of the sixth. Hey, diddle diddle, we're going up the middle. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm trying to avoid. I'm trying to keep my civilians alive by going around the side. Uh, we are continuing getting our civilians being tired, running them as far this way as we can to make our trip shorter because as we run out of time, we might not be able to get those second set of civilians in there. We will try. Okay, we have our artillery. We have I think that's C Company. C Company, yep. Yeah. We have our C Company going to be unfixed to help deal with this, but still A Company will deal with this. I hope B Company comes available. That'd be awesome. Even more awesome is if that we can get these trucks. Oh, if we can get those trucks, that would make life a lot easier. All right, let's see what happens. Ah, oh, there's a machine gun in that position as well. Oh, that's further up the road. Oh, no. Where are they? Oh, they're way the heck up there. That must be a heavy machine gun. Oh, shoot. And they are coming down to... Holy crap! Did you see that? They just... Oh, no. Well, that there goes my plan. Ha! <laughs> Shoot. Whose idea was this, anyways? Oh, there's more, too. What the heck? So there's two Viet Cong infantry companies. With RPGs. Platoons. That's an Arvin troop up there. So, machine gun. Yeah, yeah, looks like the Viet Cong are attacking. C Company is about to get organized and will be released for combat soon. Okay. Looks like the Viet Cong are attacking in force. B Company has been made available to help with the attack. And we have air support. Oh, man, this is just getting better and better. We have lots of goodies now. Except our artillery was totally useless. Oh, it drifted into a spot where the Viet Cong were. That's handy. And maybe we took out that machine gun? Maybe? Maybe? No. Did you see, though, that even though it drifted and hit a spot where we know the Viet Cong is, we can't see them? That's, that is tough. That is crazy tough. Okay. Um, what are we going to do? We need to deal with this because there's a platoon platoon there two platoons there with rpgs they will take out our trucks better to take the french again next time you seem to succeed with them the most hey we're not done yet be positive clink be positive we're still 10 turns away from my defeat <laughs> jeez but we do have b company oh maybe not damn it Oh, here it is. Oh, yes. Oh, no. That's C Company. That's okay. So let's get these guys closer. Man. 
now. How do we deal with this so we can be sneaky and get around them? So they probably burned through most of their action points to, to get where they were going. Let's pull this other platoon in here. We're going to overstack this just to draw fire. Okay, so we have their A quality troops. We have two shots left even though we moved. So let's see if we can cause some damage on these platoons. Again, we're trying to draw fire. That's our primary goal right now. Uh, so we reduce that by one. We're going to see if we can attack that one. So let's see. So we reduce both of these platoons by one. That's fantastic. Let's do a shot each on these. Okay, let's try the other one. So we reduced it again by one. Okay, let's see. So we yeah, so we reduced that those two platoons by two. Let's try and do an assault. This is just a standard assault. It probably won't work, but we are going to try anyways. Uh, we weren't successful, but we did destroy the the RPG unit that was attached to that. Um. So, let's risk. Because we need we need time, let's risk sending our trucks across and down as far away as we can to avoid being shot at. This is risky. Totally risky. Let's see what happens. Okay. One made it. Let's see what happens with the other one. Who made it? That's that's good. We also have some machine gun jeeps. Let's bring them down for their support. Okay, so we can use them to provide some suppressing fire. Let's bring this other jeep down as well. And do the same. Get some suppressing fire in there. Of course, these are paper tigers. They will be decimated quickly, so it's best to keep them out of the way. Hopefully, the fire will be drawn here the, uh, during the, uh, the VC's turn, and my jeeps will survive one more turn. Uh, regardless, we need to move our civilians again down the road. Let's double time them, try and catch up. We need to get our civilians as close as possible so we can have a return trip as short as possible but dealing with this at the same time so let's use our artillery we still have a battery here let's hit it there and there uh, we do have a full company up here which will probably try and attack somewhere around here I don't know what's gonna happen up there but we need to secure this and make sure that the VC don't come in here so we have still a safe path passage to go through <laughs> bottom of the sixth is saying ah, I'd hate to be the one who drew the short straw deciding who had to drive the lead truck on that move yeah I know no kidding especially since that we knew there was something down here but we didn't know what it was so very very risky but completing the mission that's what we're all about here completing the mission Doesn't matter how you get it done, just get it done. Okay, let's end the turn. Okay, we're under attack here. That's that's not good. Oh my goodness, where are they going? Oh, sugar. So they're attacking the camp, which is, of course, right on our line of uh, our route to get around, which means I have to attack those things in order to clear the route. <laughs> B 
bottom of the sixth. Gutsy call. Get it done first. That's got to do it later. So that doesn't bode well for me. That uh, that attack is 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 not good. Uh, time is running very short. Hopefully at this point you're dealing with the Via Kong attack and are finishing off the last two phases. If you haven't completed them already, if you have not done so, you may need to clear the road to allow your convoys to pass, even if they are under fire. Uh, draw opposing opportunity fire so you can hopefully pass through unscathed. Yeah, so I even tell you, because I'm nice that way. Okay. So, we... We have a conundrum. What do we do? And how do we deal with it? We need to get our trucks here. Somewhere in here. They are stuck here. We have a VC company here. We have a machine gun here that has been shooting at us that we've seen before. There's a machine gun here. There's the remnants of a VC company here. We have a an American company here with mortar support. We have a CIDG company in the Special Forces camp. What do I do with my trucks? How far can they move right now? Let's see. Okay. So, I think going up here would be silly. So let's take them and move up to this position here. And then with that, maybe we can cut across down below the base. We still need to attack this company, but hopefully we can keep them busy. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. That was all uphill, hence the, the short distance. Plus we had to uh, cross a water feature. That doesn't help. So we burned another turn. Going off-road. But our two units are closer to where they need to go. Um, I think until these infantry can come up and, and be supportive, let's move this one up into a better position. Yeah, that's fine. Draw the fire. We might lose this camp. That's Yeah, that's why we didn't go up on that ridge, because that machine gun is still there. I do have air support in my back pocket. Yes, bottom of the sixth. I have two. The question is, where do I put it? I suspect this company will assault this, but I don't know for sure. If I put it there, there might not be anyone there to, uh, to destroy. see I yeah I can't even see the strength because they're uh, they're in a village hex let's start moving these platoons around we will want to try and get into this hex if they haven't done so already this company is still still fixed um, we have B Company finally available, so let's start hauling B Company towards this objective. Uh, yeah, let's do that. We're double timing them, getting them running. And B Company, yeah. So that one didn't move as far because it had to go through the trenches. Uh, we will double time our civilians, get them closer. We will move these civilians. Now, let's deal with this. We have... Let's just shoot first. Ask questions later. Oh, our machine guns are effective, but... Oh. Yeah, see, that's what I meant. Paper Tigers. Oh, there's another platoon in there. Buggers. Yeah, so we took a loss of the Jeep. That's kind of expected. 
Let's fire at these guys. Well, we destroyed them. That's fine. Let's assault. We should be able to overrun that. If we look, It's since it's in the open, we can identify that it only has one strength point. We should be able to overrun that. Which we did. And then let's uh, bring our other platoons down and start shooting that other one. So, yeah. We didn't get as lucky there as we wanted to, but what do you do? Yeah, a company of French paras would be awesome, Clink. No kidding. All right. We don't have any other toys that we can use, unfortunately. Our mortars are out. We have civilians providing intelligence. That's not good. Hopefully we can deal with this, and we can start walking the civilians down somewhere. Civilians are close. We need to figure out where we're going to send them. Oh, it's getting close. Only eight turns left. That machine gun. Oh, I should have used the airstrike. I should have used the airstrike. Oh, good. So we're drawing them into the open. That will work to our benefit. Oh, looks like they're preparing assault positions. That's not good. Where is he going? see all right that is working to our benefit so let's attack this units here and let's attack this excellent so we've decimated that platoon it's it's taken some heavy losses it's taken a lot of losses perfect now let's decide what we're going to do with our trucks um Going there would not be a very wise idea, I don't think. So let's go here. Uh, let's go here. Yeah, okay, here we go. We're on the right path. We're one turn away from getting our civilians to where they need to be, those ones. We are going to take out these VC. Gosh darn. Uh, did we reduce anything? No. So let's use our trusty commander. Perfect. Now let's uh, let's send the rest of A Company back because we want to make sure that we get those points, and we're going to replace this with B Company and let B Company do the dirty work, taking out that machine gun. If we can take out that machine gun and clear that road for the road the the route back, that will help us achieve our victory. So again, what I'm doing is I'm swapping out A Company for B Company. Their task is to, B Company's task is to take out this machine gun, make sure that this is clear so my trucks have a clear route on the way back to grab these civilians and make our life a lot easier within the time that we have. That's the idea, that's the plan. Um, we have our artillery. Let's uh, prep 
I don't know where they're going to go. But let's take that out. Oh, we'll use our airstrikes. I forgot about the airstrikes. What do we have? We have four air power. Ooh. We have bombs. We have rockets. We have more bombs. We want to use bombs. Let's do that. Let's do it twice. Just because I really want that thing to die. Uh, I don't know where they're going. I'm kind of... Any guesses? Any guesses where these things are going to go? Or should I hold off on my bombs for the other two? What do you think? What do you think? I don't know. I could plot one here, but I don't know for sure. Uh, let's do it anyways. Do some more bombs. Send the A4. Well, I sent those are. Okay, let's let's do an A4 then. We have a rocket firing A4. Where should I put it? There? What do you think? Okay. Now let's do it there. So we have bombs and rockets going there. We have bombs and bombs going there. We have artillery. At both of those locations, we don't have any shots with them. Oh, we do have a shot with a mortar. Let's direct fire at these platoons over here. So we were targeting the one that had this one. Let's see. And we took out two strength points. We took out a full squad from that, so that's good. Okay, let's end the turn. That machine gun... We know that's there. That must be a heavy machine gun because the range on that is insane. Ah, uh, no, no, that's too bad. Oh, yes, yeah. Oh, well, that's too bad. That is gonna miss. three airstrikes came in but we did get reinforcements what did we get a gunship <laughs> that will make our life a million times easier just like that that is amazing so next turn we'll be able to fly in start shooting start shooting how exciting is that Let's move our American Sea Company up. Get ready to clear this road. Ah, that RPG is there. But we don't see it. Okay. The mortar, we don't have any shots left, so we can move it closer. We could go around. Let's just shoot at that machine gun, light machine gun over here. That's fine. Let's move B Company up. Get ready to take out that machine gun. A Company is going to go back to the fire base. Civilians are going to keep on trucking down the road. Let's throw our machine gun jeeps with them just for safety. And let's get our trucks. unloaded and on their journey back 
Okay, so we have two civilians there. That's awesome. We are rigged. <laughs> it's not rigged. It's to help. Providing you options. Alright, there we go. Let's end the turn. As expected. That machine gun is shooting at us. Oh, of course. We destroyed it. And, uh... Oh! Well done for not for getting the civilians to there. We've earned 75 event points. That's good. And another one. Perfect. So that's 150 event points. Our airstrikes are pummeling the, the forest, which is awesome. And the airfield. Excellent. Uh, let's, let's attack. Okay. We're we're totally on the right path here. This is exactly what we needed to do. We know that there are VC here, so let's start dealing with that. We need to clear them to make sure that our trucks have safe passage. Th that rocket is still there. I thought the airstrike would have wiped it out, but it didn't. So, yeah, we had to get boots on the ground to do that. What? Airstrikes aren't the end-all, the be-all? So confused. Alright, come on. Let's clean this up. And let's move our, our mortars up here. So we're securing a line here. Just so... Or not. Or not. <laughs> Next turn we will. So we want to bring our trucks up. I think we're doing okay. We should be able to get our civilians next turn. We can start hauling those up for sure. Oh, the civilians are so slow at walking. I mean, as expected, but still. And A Company, we were given the mission to send it to the firebase. That is precisely what we're doing. So next turn, they should all be able to go into the firebase. Oh, what's that? A reconnaissance unit. And let's use our let's use our weapons. A heavy machine gun and a tank. And we destroyed it. There we go. There we we got lucky. Uh, that is that was civilians. That's what that was down there. Uh, it's a good thing we didn't shoot at it, or even worse, assault it. Okay, and the turn. We're almost done. I burned. Oh, I had. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Airstrikes coming in on that empty hex. Yay! Dropped its bomb. Alright, so let's use B Company and these CID GG units to deal with this. We will be in a position to surround this and destroy it. next turn, I think, if all goes well. Yeah, there we go. That's a good position. We have mortars right there. Let's plop them in there. We even have an airstrike or two left, so let's use those. Uh, what do we have? Ah, this is, this is cool. So you'll notice that these A4 Skyhawks have a multi-strike capability. That means that after their airstrike, they will be returned to the pool. 
one more time. So you can use them twice in a scenario. That's cool. So let's use them again to bomb. Uh, did I see right? It looked like two jets. However, the sound was that of a propeller plane. Yeah, it sometimes the, the sound gets confused. Should have been jets. Because I think they're A4s and F100s in here. So yeah, they should have been jets. Uh, let's see. So everything... We're okay. We're going to take our trucks. Shouldn't get shot at. Let's move our civilians. Ah, oh, shoot, I forgot. I did, didn't do that right. That was my fault. Can I load? Yep. Let's bring our other trucks down. That was a misclick on my part. So next turn, I'll be able to load the civilians. We are five turns away from the end. There we go. We're ready for destroying that next turn. Yeah, so that should have been a jet sound. That might have been me choosing the wrong file name. Oh, it drifted into our own units. Uh, no effect, though, so that's okay. Uh, do we risk going in there with the bombs coming? No, I don't think we should. So let's just stand back and shoot. Uh, Wednesday is the uh, Street Without Joy session, Clink. Thanks for joining, though. It's good to see you. But, you know what? Street Without Joy is going to be a pretty big scenario, so we'll start it on Wednesday and maybe continue doing it on Saturdays and just go back and forth, just because it, it is a large scenario. It will take a time to get through it, so we can burn through that on Wednesdays and Saturdays, starting this Wednesday. Doing a lot of uh, firing into these, uh, into this jungle, but not having much effect. It doesn't look like they're still quite well intact. Take care, Clink. All right, let's get our trucks back to the town. Let's load up our civilians. Civilian should be there next turn. Our A company is at the firebase. And I think that's it. Let's just wait for that other airstrike to come in before we assault that thing. Yeah, I have to fix this message. Sorry about that. Oh, we've got the civilians at the at the rendezvous beta. So we've earned 75. That's great. And next turn, we should be able to get the same. They uh, that airstrike didn't come in yet, so let's uh, let's just continue shooting. good safe way to make sure you go through it to the end <laughs> isn't that the truth uh, but I will go through it to the end no worries victory or victory or loss I will take it all the way to the end just not in one session that'll be multiple sessions like Operation Starlight that took four or five sessions to go through a couple hours at a time 
Wow, these guys are dug in or something. Just make sure I do have any company where it's supposed to go. Yeah, I think so. All is good. Let's uh, see what happens. Yakov are attacking. Yeah, I know. We earned 75 event points for the last civilian to get there. Well done for getting all the civilians to Rendezvous Beta. You've earned an additional 200 event points for completing Phase 3. You can now move to Phase 4, which we did. Oh, finally our, our Skyhawk is coming in. Did it do anything? No. So, let's be mean. Let's assault. Let's just get her done. There we go. So, as far as I know, we have completed all the objectives. We completed all the phases. We are pretty much done. Let's just select our A company, make sure that they're all in the firebase. Which they are. And the turn. Yeah, we know. Perfect. And end. That's it. Time has reached. We've secured a major victory. We by an extra 250 points. Yeah, we did good. We did awesome. How fun is that? Yay. So yeah, that is how you win a scenario without any objectives on the map. It's all a matter of completing the mission, finishing the mission, as described as you're playing through it. This opens up scenario design to vastly. You can do so many things with this now. You just have to decide what you want things to be worth and when they're going to be worth those points. I think it, it really takes the campaign series to a completely new level and makes one really think about how they're going to design scenarios and, and play those scenarios and noticing where you have to spend your time focusing on the objectives as well as the missions and a combination of both of them. I think this is fantastic. I love it. It makes my scenario design significantly much more fun. There we go. That being said, thank you so much for joining. It is truly appreciated. Keep that smile on. Happy thoughts to everyone. Have a good weekend, and we'll take care. Bye-bye.